Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Malloch. Yes, you are. Yeah. I verified it before the show. I made you send me like a copy of your driver's I license. I had to and... cut off my thumb so you could like <laughs> take a thumbprint. Run DNA tests. You're like, couldn't you have used hair? You're like, I could have. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, fact, I, that would have worked way better I've, than I've a always, thumb. I've always been one to go whole hog, Ben. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, how's it, how's it, how's it been? Even though we've just been talking for two hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty um, exhausted. I wasn't, but the all of our sports talk ahead of the show. I'm I'm. It's I'm a it's a soul crushing hobby. Spent. It is when you like the teams that we like. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't know though. I get a couple good ones in there. The, the Columbus Crew are doing all right, although they've dropped off a little bit. And that uh, that's well. That's when the sport is soul crushing. Like, yeah, because when like you you know that's that's the tough thing. If you're a fan of like a major league soccer team, it's like watching a bad soccer game is just fucking nightmare shit. Well, see, that's where I don't understand because I only watch the MLS. So it's like if you if you, as long as you deprive yourself of any good soccer, I'm, I'm not saying there's not good soccer games in the league itself i'm saying like if you're trying to follow a full season of major league soccer at like you will never like and you got a team and you're rooting for them and then you get that fucking game where it's like neither team like both teams like partied all night or some shit because yeah. they're it's just like, like not fucking feeling it it's that zero zero draw, but not the one where it's like you're on pins and needles the whole time. It's like both teams are just like, yeah, we ate too much turkey. Like the time, yeah, yeah, the type where like the team's social media account it just like posts a shrug emoji with the final zero zero. Yeah. It's like I, I don't fucking know what happened tonight, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Bad soccer is one of the worst. Uh, although I I would argue bad that sports bad sports in general, yeah. Yeah, bad baseball is probably the worst because it just takes so fucking long. So it at least leads to a lot of really funny, like, why you know funny tweets where it's like, uh, you know, just somebody says, like, "Hey, I'm watching baseball," and a guy's like has an easy pop fly, and he like he somehow runs like just the right way to like fucking. Oh yeah, see that's not run what I meant into by a bad. Wall and then like a ball lands on his nuts. Yeah, that's not what I mean. That kind of bad baseball is one of the most fun things to watch. I love when they fuck up. Like, and I this will be unfair coming from a fat, unathletic person like me. But when you say like easy plays, because none of them are like, if you tell me, "Hey, Steve, catch this pop fly," it's like, good chance I'm not going to. <laughs> um, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is someone gonna <laughs> die if I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but. Watching professional athletes that generally make those plays look like they could do it in their sleep when they mess up. I like that. I mean, bad baseball where it's just not entertaining. The, the, so the worst baseball is like you can have baseball that's like really defensive and like, uh, you know, hey, we got a no hitter going. This is interesting. Or you can have a game that's just an offensive fucking slugfest. The worst type of baseball game is where the pitchers are giving up singles every inning, but that's it. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like one to two or two to three, but just like dinks yeah. here and there. No good plays either way. Yeah. yeah. And, and ESPN has given up on the game entirely. I don't know <laughs> if you've watched an ESPN broadcast in some time. They have so much shit other than the game on the screen. <laughs> it's it's almost comedic. I swear to God, yeah. like. It's like, hey, we're going to do an interview with some pitcher who's not even playing this game in the dugout. And he is half the fucking screen. So you're just you watching know, a guy like chewing gum and being like, yeah, what well, is my perfect Sunday? That's a good question. <laughs> you know, and, it's like, and then like yeah. the scoreboard is massive because it's got to fit like the betting odds and shit on there now. And like the win probability, like that means <laughs> anything. Like it means anything because one out shifts that probability by like right. twenty percent. So yeah, the game itself is like the fourth or fifth most important thing on the screen. To the, you know though, what's funny about that? I don't watch as a habit. I watch like nothing on ESPN because they're basically that's, that's in every way. Though yeah, they're about the worst for every sport. Life. 
And the funny thing about that was growing up in the 90s and even early 2000s, they were the leaders of like sports. That's what they did. And everybody wanted to be ESPN. They're the prime example of everything we're doing is working, but we got to keep changing. And it's like, oh, OK, uh, <laughs> well, you fucked it all up on every. <laughs> uh, I get so mad at that. Now, some of the, the broadcast uh, NBC and stuff are doing it, too, with football, where they do that same shit where. You're watching it, and then they're like, oh, we'll show a replay, but we're going to do split screen. It's like, yeah, I can't follow the action on two different like sides of the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Either miss the play and show the replay or just forget about the replay, but don't try to show both because that yeah. doesn't fucking work. It, or it's, worse is... like, So I, I love the Red Zone. If you're a football fan, I, I, most people do who enjoy the game because you just you throw that on on Sunday most of the interesting shit is going to be on your TV. It's a great channel. It's produced really well. Um, but when they came along, that's but, what these other things are trying to copy, but they all do it shitty. But even they do, like, occasionally it's like, you know, I don't mind if Chris Hansen's like, let's let's flip it over to a double box because we got two teams in the red zone. But sometimes it gets fucking nightmarish. And it's <laughs> like, let's go to the fucking pentagram. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you're like, what the hell's going on? I can't on? even. What game do I watch? Come on! When they when they lost me and they completely broke my brain was what was it like two or three years ago when Jeter was going for the home run record, but it was the end of the baseball season, which put it at the beginning of the football season. Uh, and I'd be watching football, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the action, they would cut to a Jeter at bat just in case he hit the home run, and it's like. I, I'm like, if I want to fucking see baseball, I'd be watching yeah. baseball. I'm watching football. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, like, uh, one time Red Zone was like, we're going to go to the Octo Box. And again, I love the channel, but they're like, we're going to go to these eight games. And I felt like that fucking picture from like that scene from A Clockwork Orange where your eyes are pried <laughs> open and you can't turn away. Uh, uh, but it's like, but none of those games are like, at the time, it was like, I, I wanted to see how the fucking, what the Eagles were doing. And I don't think they were even on the TV. Like, see, I would have, I would have had a stroke because with two young kids and a wife that doesn't like sports, a lot of times I'm watching football on my phone. And if they went to an <laughs> octa screen on a phone, I, yeah, your, your eyes would literally yeah. bleed. Yeah. These, <laughs> like, it's just, these are just buttons on my phone at this point. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyway, anyway uh, welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast, the only show that can't stay on a topic of nothing. <laughs> yeah. And we'll, we'll go our, out of our way to talk about the one thing we're really not supposed to talk supposed about to, yeah. on here, which is sports. Um, that is pretty funny because it's like, oh, we don't have a topic and we still fucking fuck that up. Yeah, like, we can't even like derail, right? Um <laughs> But yeah, we tell each other stories. They can be about anything. Uh, they, no, they can can't. be about. They can be about sports. Uh, but you know, we we prefer were... we prefer to shoot from the hip there. Yeah, back when we did actual topics, I think there was a couple. I remember doing the one about the guy that cheated at the Olympics way back in the day at the marathon. <laughs> we yeah. get somebody pick him up in a car. That was great. Yeah, that was great. I would be at a dedicated sports podcast if that stuff still happened on a regular basis. Yeah, there's today. really nothing like funny <laughs> happening in sports anymore. That's what. See, I'm going to keep this derailed for a second because we were talking about like the leagues trying different things, like football trying to expand overseas. What they need is a wacky races league, basically, but it's not all races. It, it encompasses all sports, but just every like individual sport within the wacky the category, like basically like the globe trotters stuff but not scripted it's just teams cheating in any fucking conceivable way yeah. at every sport like i would watch the shit out of that that'd be fun it's like the it'd be like wrestling it was just like you know, you know it devolved though. like if you told people ahead of time like this is no holds barred you know the team that like brought like a fucking crowbar <laughs> it's just kind of it's like well surprise surprise they won again 
Sure, and by maybe the tenth time of that happening, it would get boring. But the first nine times would be awesome. Yeah. Well, I just like the idea of like these teams trying to like cleverly swindle their way to a championship, and then just get cracked in the fucking jaw with a crowbar. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well. The, the <laughs> team that was bottom of the league just like they wait till the championships won, and they just show up and beat up the team and steal the trophy. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah, I mean, like you know, I think about that being a football fan and stuff like. If there weren't so many rules, like there's there's times where like you you know one team would beat the fucking shit out of the other one. Yep. Um I mean we've seen times where it's come close to that <laughs> when it is against the rules. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, yeah, our show's not really generally about sports. It's about ninety nine percent of the time about uh, creepy pastas. This, this but, show uh, is about whatever we're like actually. It's the opposite of whatever we're supposed to talk about. I didn't know I was supposed to talk. I think if I'm like following the rules set forth by the UN convention, I'm not supposed to talk. But well, <laughs> UN, UN has a lot of fucking problems right now enforcing yeah, the rules. That's the thing; they're very so. distracted with other stuff. So yeah. we're gonna go for it. I do have a creep. Actually, I have two creepy pastas again, just like the last time, because they're both kind of short. Um, they actually kind of have a common theme. More in common, they're both by the same person. Um, more, and I, I just, more, in pro- more in common. I just found this author's page and yeah. <laughs> took their shit. That's not. I. I actually did a lot. I read. I read so many fucking creepy pastas looking for ones I liked. <laughs> so I put at least more effort into it than I generally do. Um, so I think these are these are good ones, but they're two relatively short ones. Um, so I guess we'll jump. I can't say we'll jump right in because we're like twenty minutes in already. But uh, uh, so the first one is called the Fortune Teller, and this author. I tried and tried. I can't really figure out how you're supposed to say this name. It's like Alperos Lila. Okay. For as long as it, yeah. <laughs> Alperos. It doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. Sounds like well, a but pasta it's... dish. <laughs> Alperos con pollo. <laughs> we'll take two. It sounds delicious. For as long as I could remember, I have possessed the gift of sight. Oh, me too. I could see things that others couldn't. Glimpses of the future, hints of what was to come, and so... I became a fortune teller using my gift to help others find their way in life. Sure. I would use my gift to win the lottery, but eh, I'm a jerk. <laughs> I just want to help myself. But one day, something changed. It started out innocuously enough. And I don't know if that is the correct usage of that word. Anyway. A few customers here and there, all with the same vision of for their future. Fire and smoke, destruction and chaos. It was a strange and unsettling pattern, but I tried not to think too much of it. <laughs> I think if I saw one person's future and it was like them screaming and melting, I'd, I would yeah, it's have just to... that scene from Terminator 2 where the fucking bomb drops. <laughs> yeah, and if you keep seeing that over and over again, you're like, eh. Yeah, well, I haven't been that right. <laughs> As the days passed, however, the pattern grew more and more pronounced. Every customer who came to me had the same vision. A world consumed by flames. A future destroyed by fire. You don't, first, need, I thought you it was don't just... need to be a fortune teller to see that. Right. Turns out they weren't looking into a crystal ball. They were watching the news. Right. <laughs> At first, I thought it was just a coincidence. You know, a lot of people die terribly by fire right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking, it's either a fucking volcano or an atom bomb but it happens all the time yeah, that's a pretty i think it's like the third leading cause of death um i don't know i'm not gonna look into it though but as the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months i began to realize that something was very wrong there was a darkness creeping into the world, a force that was spreading like cancer and consuming everything in its path. I tried to warn people, to tell them that danger was coming, but no one would listen. They scoffed at me and dismissed me as a madwoman. And so I retreated into myself, withdrawing from the world and the people in it. 
I hope that was somebody like uh, donating to our page. Yeah, that's, we, we got to catch her. I actually record <laughs> this outside on the street. Someone's out. like, someone's like, here you go. Please shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> they say it all nice like that. It, like, yeah, specifically, stop talking about sports. The weird part was it was like an eighty-six year old woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, here you go, Sonny. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Quiet now. <laughs> But the visions only grew stronger. They came to me in my dreams, in my waking moments, and even in the midst of my daily routines. Everywhere I turned, I saw the same thing. A world consumed by fire and smoke. A future destroyed by the darkness that was spreading like a plague. And then, one day, it happened. The sky turned red, the ground shook with the force of the flames. I watched in horror as the world bur burned around me, as the very fabric of reality was torn apart by the darkness that, that had consumed it. Oh. <laughs> and then my notes signed me out, because why the fuck not? In yeah. the middle well, of the, the end. Story. Clearly the end. Yeah. Intermission, I need to... Oh, well, yeah, the end. Ta-da! The fucking world oh. ended, so it's done. Yeah. As the flames of the apocalypse consumed everything in their path, the vast majority of humanity was wiped out. Only a handful of individuals managed to survive the cataclysmic event. And as I stood there, alone in the midst of the burning ruins, I realized that my gift had been a curse all along. I had seen the future, but I had been powerless to change it. And now, as the world burned around me, I knew that there was no going back. In the aftermath of the apocalypse, I wondered the desolate ruins of what was once a thriving civilization. The world was unrecognizable, a barren wasteland devoid of life and hope. I was among the very last humans alive, damned to bear witness to the world that once was. As I roamed the empty streets and charred remains of buildings, I thought back to the days when I had used my gift to help others. I had believed that I could make a difference, that I could use my abilities for good. But in the end, it had all been for naught. I had been powerless to stop the darkness that had consumed the world. My warnings had fallen on deaf ears, and now I was left to bear witness to the destruction that I had foreseen. In the days that followed, I struggled to come to terms with my newfound reality. I had lost everything, my home, my loved ones, my purpose in life. The weight of my gift hung heavy on my shoulders, a constant reminder of the world that had been lost, a world I had failed to help. The end. So it was short. Yeah. I really liked the idea of like seeing the future and then having it come true, but being like one of the few people that like, because it'd be one thing. It's like, oh, I'm seeing the apocalypse, the world's ending, and then the meteorite hits and kills everybody. It's like, okay. Yeah. But like to see it coming and then to like survive it and have to live with this, like, I saw this coming, but I couldn't do anything. I liked that angle of it. Like, yeah, I. I don't know. I, I, like, I think the that perspective is an interesting. Of like, you know, I I know what's coming. I can't stop it, and then it happens, and it, like, there's this guilt of like, what could I have done? But would you really have that if like you well, yeah, seen I think... the future all that time? Like, you know, you can't change it. Like, yeah, especially on a scale like that. That part I think was overplayed. The like, oh, I was a wasn't able to stop it. It's like, well, hey, you didn't really like. Even if you had convinced the people that it was coming, from the sounds of it, it wasn't something that was stoppable. Yeah. Um. So I thought that part was a little overplayed, and I didn't love that they had to throw in as like, oh, I saw this fiery death coming to all these people. A darkness was taking over this world because it's like two different things almost. Like, there's some fiery apocalyptic uh, event it doesn't even have to be supernatural could have been like nuclear war could have been anything but then to like throw this like super now but the darkness i, I guess I don't, could be metaphorical too yeah i don't yeah i didn't take it that way i took it as more just sort of like the imagery of like death you know yeah. kind of cloaking the world around you um but i i you know it, it's weird because to me it was like this all felt like you know setup of a Twilight Zone episode, and I was kind of like, well, get to, like I didn't. It was like a few days went by, I still felt like shit about it. Like I, I wanna, yeah, that's I want to know what the fuck you ate. Like, you, <laughs> how are you still there? 
<laughs> that was that was a very much one of my like I could see surviving the initial like fiery whatever, especially if you take it in like the almost like the um uh judgment day uh rapture sense where it was like a supernatural like these people like burned a crisp and some people were whatever and you were just left in purgatory mm -hmm. but that still leaves the logistics of surviving after the fact with no food and no like <laughs> and i'm not saying nobody could do it but it wouldn't be you wouldn't be really ha in order to survive you wouldn't be sitting around dwelling on the fact that you had these visions you'd be foraging and trying to build shelter <laughs> and mm -hmm. like everything else and so there wasn't a lot of that it was kind of a weird thing yeah. from that perspective because i had that exact thought too like it's like how like i could see like the flames somehow like sparing some people but then how do you continue after that yeah which i mean to be fair is like that's you know clearly not the point of the story or they would have wrote about that um but that's just where my head went is like you know the point yeah. of that story was to show that perspective of like the inevitability of fate but it's like uh to me yeah, it's like, like so no i want to know how you crapped did you have anything to wipe with when you crapped you know <laughs> yeah the charred remains of all the people that died ben duh yeah. that's <laughs> that a, that is not nearly enough ply you can't find charman but you can find charred man charred so. man yeah charred man toilet paper <laughs> fucking sucks it's like negative the hell out of you yeah negative eight ply and heaven forbid if you find a tooth that's still intact yeah so the second story, same person, Alperos Lila, uh, is called Echoes from the Ashes. So there is kind of a fire like theme here. <laughs> the air was thick and heavy, permeated with the scent of burning flesh. I was oh, trapped in my up. Yeah. I, it kind of reads like that. That's one of the reasons why I like this one, because I read a couple of their different stories, but uh, anyway. I was trapped in my own body, or what was left of it, swallowed by an overwhelming sense of despair. My skin, once fair and smooth, was now nothing more than ash and char, yet I was still here, trapped in this surreal existence, a consciousness without a body. Hours had passed since the last embers in the crematorium had cooled. I was no longer physically present. My remains were swept away and deposited in a ceramic urn to be taken to my grieving family member. They believed I was gone, but my consciousness persisted in this ethereal plane, suspended in a state of eternal torment. Each moment was an eternity. Each second was an agony. I couldn't describe... I could still feel the blistering heat licking at my skin, gnawing at my insides. I could hear the crackle of the flames, see the world through an inferno's haze. Each molecule of my being felt like it was a flame, and the pain was unbearable. I wasn't alone in my torment. There were others, others like me, who remained even after their physical forms had ceased to exist. We were caught in the same fiery torment, tethered to an existence of unbearable pain. Their once comforting voices had now become the harbingers of a horrifying reality. They told me, with a profound sadness, that I would grow accustomed to the pain. This existence, a limbo of unending torment, was beyond human comprehension. Yet here I was, a consciousness engulfed in flames, a captive, captive to the everlasting pain. The others who shared this space with me were of all ages and from all walks of light, each had their own tales of their transition into this torment. It's going to be Despite... like the fucking opening of a old sitcom. <laughs> Our torment. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was like trying to think of a play on like the odd couple or something where you're like <laughs> two completely opposite people get burned and charred and stuck in purgatory together <laughs> <laughs> with hilarious consequences. <laughs> <laughs> They the feel spider. the burn, but you'll be feeling the gut busters throughout this summer. <laughs> the hottest new series on Fox. Despite our diverse backgrounds, we were bound by our common plight. Sorry, I'm still laughing because now I'm just in my head. I'm trying to come up with a sitcom. It's, like, yeah, it's, just, it's really the imagery is like, as bad as this was, we sang Kumbaya. 
together. <laughs> At the end of the day, we always learn a moral, a story. Yeah. I could not. I tell you guys, I could not be in this eternal hell without you buddies. <laughs> Jeremy, is that my kidney? I don't know. And he would just play. Uh, you can't That's do just... it auditorially, but he would just like mug at the camera, <laughs> like Jim from the office. Yeah. Except she'd be on fire the whole time because that's, yeah, that's the yeah. <laughs> like, he'd be in hell. Yeah, where Jim Halpert belongs. <laughs> uh, blah blah blah. Despite our diverse backgrounds, we were bound by our common plight. They spoke in hushed tones of acceptance, a chilling resignation to the cruel twist of fate that kept us here. They'd all said it, I would get used to the pain, that it would become a part of me, an appendage of my non-physical self. The pain will stop bothering you, they reassured, their voices echoing through the fiery abyss. I was consumed by an overwhelming sense of horror at the thought of this becoming my normal, the prospect of growing numb to this pain, to the ceaseless fire gnawing at the remnants of my existence, was a more profound terror than the pain itself. The weight of my existence seemed to grow heavier with each passing moment. My consciousness drifted in the midst of their ever-present flames, burning yet not consumed, trapped in a purgatory of pain and regret. Time had lost... Well, you know what? Now I think about it. A burning purgatory of pain and re regrets what I experience any time I actually like get chicken wings I've anymore. I've had Taco Bell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this story is great because I think most of us can identify yeah. with it. That was like a great venture, Roseline. I, I forget how it goes, but it was like... <laughs> I feel like the necromancer character from that show like bursts into the bathroom and is like, Make way! I've had Taco <laughs> Bell for lunch! <laughs> yeah <laughs> instead of like some weird looking like psychic woman saying want you know move towards the light or run towards the light it's head for the border <laughs> or whatever it is run for <laughs> anyway uh, blah, blah, blah. purgatory of pain and regret time had lost its meaning morphed into a monstrous unending spiral of suffering the others had all grown silent now, resigned to their fate. I could hear their whispers of acceptance, echoes of their lost lives and forgotten dreams. My heart ached, or what was left of it, at the grim reality of my existence. I was nothing more than a consciousness on fire, a spectral ember, ember smoldering in the ever-blazing flames. I'll get used to it, I echoed into the abyss. The words felt hollow, a mocking echo of the promise of relief that would never come. I was trapped here in this hellish limbo, a phantom forever burning but never consumed, an existence that had become a horrifying paradox of life and death. My screams mingled with the others, a chorus of the damned echoing through the ether. Yet the world outside remained oblivious to our torment, and we were left alone to burn in our shared purgatory, lost souls in a world of, of relentless burning agony. The End So, um, so neither will be okay. Yeah, see, neither of those stories had any kind of like real like ending, okay. ending where it wraps things up right. But I still liked them because, at least for me, it they both had interesting ideas. And I don't know, I I know I've had that thought before. Like, what if like when you die, you just forever experience like that lasting, like the last pain of like whatever killed mm -hmm. you. Like, you're just a lingering like conscious echo of whatever. You know, you don't go on to another life, but like, and I felt like, like, feel like there's no like version of that. That's good. Yeah. Because it's like, if you're feeling like what your body was going through at the end, it's like, you can say like, oh man, cremated, like the torture, but it's also like, well, if you get buried, you're, oh yeah. So, yeah. I had mound of earth <laughs> getting devoured by bugs See, and we've... shit. We've, we've obviously have been doing this show because that was also my first thought. It was just like, oh man, don't cremate people. And it's like, do I really want to be trapped under the ground? Like, yeah, I feel yeah. myself being eaten if and you die decomposing and see, oh, for all eternity. I get to feel the pressure of the entire goddamn ocean and that burning me. in your lungs of like suffocating. Drowning, yeah, yeah, that's 
Death by Snoo Snoo. That's that's the only fucking way to go. <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck oh, wow. in this purgatory. Dude, man, you found the loophole, man. <laughs> you actually found a way out of it. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. being dead is pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I'm sorry your ethereal hell isn't as cool as mine, but... I just wish I hadn't I, died fucking that light socket. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm having snoo snoo yeah. constantly. Because, yeah. Well, that makes a, a new fear is in my brain, because I think we've also all had that, like, thought of, like, how much it would suck to die, like, taking a shit or something so that your body is found on the toilet, but... Although, maybe that would be another good one, because that feeling of, like... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're just like ah, I'm for t eternity. Yeah. yeah, as long as like your guts don't just start spilling out or something. I don't know. I don't know if it's the last like moments or whatever. It's like that's the thing is they're that, experiencing what happened. What, they're experiencing not, what happens to their body, not how. They yeah, die. after the death, right? So, so my loophole still doesn't work unless. You're dug up by a, a well. Do you, don't don't ask me how yeah. I know this, but <laughs> no. Uh, but I'm from my understanding, an erection doesn't go away right away. Right. So you I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you know if you're a woman you should keep going, but why <laughs> take the chance? <laughs> you know, you, right. you might be saving his eternal soul. Yeah, you'll enjoy it for a little bit. He'll enjoy it for an eternity. It's win-win. <laughs> that is the fucking most morbid shit <laughs> we've ever done on this show. <laughs> like, well, if your partner dies. That's our new catchphrase for the whole show. Um, yeah. Oh, man. I, my, my mom made me a shirt to celebrate this show we do. But she clearly doesn't listen to it because she would not. I was going to say she pulled the trigger early because she could have made you that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, she hears this one. She will. Uh, it'll be one of. She'll, she'll talk to me again, but it'll be like a two week like vacation period from each other. <laughs> she, she, she starts only talking to you by phone, even though like she's in the next room. <laughs> like, yeah. I just can't be in the same room with you. I don't know. So it's just like attach little notes to like the dogs. Like, you're like, or, we need cat food. <laughs> it's like, okay. Also, please don't have sex with dead I'm people. I'm sorry I told women to fuck dead bodies. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't, didn't think it would be a big whoopee de doo. <laughs> uh, well, in fairness, you didn't tell them to stop doing live ones, too. You just said, in addition, you know. Add it to the repertoire. I'm saying, you know, do your thing. Yeah. Civic yeah. duty or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. And we don't have to tell You're not going to kill him more. If he's already dead at that point, you already rocked his world. And we don't have to tell yeah. men to do the same favor for women because we've we've got episodes that already <laughs> discuss. There's plenty. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they already seem to be in on it. Right. No, no but I, I also feel like that eternity would actually be kind of hell for a woman. Mm. Like, they need that. They need to be in that moment for that to be fun. Like I feel like if you keep doing it, it's just gonna be like, God damn it! Well, I, I, I somebody's got to have that kink. I mean, I'm sure. Well, I mean, yeah. Hopefully they, that person's in jail. And hopefully, <laughs> but... uh, or, or hopefully they're listening to the show because everybody else is gonna hate this. Um, now all I can think of is one of us getting called for jury duty for Trump's thing and getting dismissed based on this <laughs> episode. Nothing to even do with Trump. They're just like, look, dude, this person clearly should not be in any. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be Trump's side arguing that. No, they'd be like. The Trump, is... or Trump would be like. Clone him. <laughs> we, we want a jury of 12 yeah. of this guy. Keep fucking. You know, it's like. <laughs> He would be like, oh, these guys are good. That's a good point. Well, that's a good podcast. You guys want to publicize on truth? <laughs> um, now I want to hack that. I, I don't know if you saw the news that came out about how he's got an aide that their, her job is literally to, like, find Trump positive stories and send them to a wireless printer that he keeps with him 
So they'll just like randomly print out so he can read them to put himself in a better mood. Like I wish I, I, I wish that dude like wasn't like after you know supreme power. Because, like, that would be... I would do the same shit if I was just a minor celebrity. <laughs> like, if I can afford it, like, yeah, print, go, ahead, go print something nice about me. Right. Like, that's the kind of, not necessarily endearing, but you'd be like, oh, that's an eccentric, like, millionaire thing. Ha, ha, ha. That's kind of funny. The fact that... Well, it's just, like, it's pure narcissism, yeah. so it's hilarious. But, but it's not like, when it's he's not been president guy, once and was probably going to be president a second time. Like when you know, yeah. like when you know, it's going to hurt a lot of people. It's yeah. like, that's harmless. But narcissism. Where I was going with that narcissism. is I want her to start printing out transcripts of our show. And I, cause I'm curious if his expression would get madder or happy. I think happy. And I don't mean that like I want it to be cause I fucking. No, nah, no, nah, he would hate this show. Cause like at some point, like one of us would use a word like verbose. <laughs> and he would just he wouldn't know what it meant he, he would just are they talking about me get it. yeah yeah he'd, just, he'd be like they called me fat like, like well yeah so that's, I... not, that's not what verbose means but you are fat <laughs> you're very weird shape yeah he is a um, and you like, know. it's not just fat it's like there's fat people all over but you he is especially weird shaped and to cover my basis here because i've had to catch myself on it because it's very very hard with trump like if you're somebody else and you're shaped like Trump, I'm not making fun of you. I'm making fun of him because he's a piece of crap. So because I, he's a bad person, right? Yeah. I, for what it's worth, I'm weirdly shaped too. Oh yeah, me too. I just I just had to like come to that realization when I hit thirty. I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, if I really applied myself, I could look normal. And like, now nah. here's the true you, creepy pasta you bin. Kind of, you kind of, you kind of have that like. It doesn't matter if you have abs; you have a pear ass bin. <laughs> so. Well, here's the truth. This is the scariest story of all this week, Ben, is that it gets worse. So much worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Between 30 and... That's why I want to be cremated. I don't care if it hurts afterwards. I'll cook that fat off my Yeah, ass. I kind of... I don't particularly have, like, any kind of religious or any kind of, like, preference there as far as that. And it's not a preserve, like, space thing because cemeteries are a waste of space and blah, blah, blah. I don't want people looking at me <laughs> like yeah. i don't like it when i'm alive i really wouldn't like it when i'm dead and have no control over the situation yeah. like yeah like i don't I, I don't know like you know this is that saying in religion like we're all made in his image is like then why do why are we like why do I look so much fucking different from some people? <laughs> like, well, because like, God damn. because he lives in a funhouse mirror like place. Yeah, so he, I just so happen to look like anything I want on any given day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's a here's a here's my rule. It's okay to body shame Donald Trump. Bad people. Yeah. 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 Uh, anybody else it's completely incidental it's the content of their character trump's content he, he has none. well here's the th so. other thing with it is that i feel like it is wrong and it's hard because when you get mad at somebody like your your go-to is like the most obvious stuff and I've, it, that's one of the areas i've had trying to have more personal growth about like avoiding a lot of what makes trump's appearance so fucking stupid is things he's done on purpose like, I don't think it's fair to make fun of somebody like how they naturally, because you can't help things. He can help a lot of the things that make him look the way that he looks. So yeah. if you're making intentional choices like that, I might question them a little more. But, uh, yeah. but oh, yeah. well, uh, he's the fittest, most healthy, most athletic president we've ever had, according yeah, to the him. Doctors say. <laughs> yeah, doctors say. Doctors he fucking found in an alley somewhere. Agree yeah. that he is the pinnacle of human health. He went to an organization similar to Doctors Without Borders, but it was called Doctors Without Degrees. Yeah. <laughs> it's just guys named Doc. He just yeah. pulled up a phone book and was like, this guy's name's Doc Edwards. Yeah. Let's see what he says. Yeah. He called Doc Rivers. He's... <laughs> Doc's like, I'm preparing for a playoff series to lose. Yeah, he still had to call like 137 different Docs before he found a blind one that was willing yeah. to say, yeah, you're, yeah. you're healthy. I, I, I just like, I know they don't exist because we don't have that kind of audience, but I just, I hear the internet people like 
making fun of Trump, like you most libtard shit. It's like, you know, two hundred and fifty some episodes. Yeah, if you haven't figured it, you knew you knew we had to lay into him eventually. Fuck. Well, like, I mean, I was thinking. I almost even said it because we've we've talked anti-Trump stuff before, but generally keep it pretty vague because we're not a political show. We're really not a show. We're just we just talk. But uh, yeah. So it's probably the most we specifically named him by name, but it's not the first time <laughs> we've made it known that neither of us are fans. Um, yeah. If you have a problem I'm with sorry, that, I don't care that much. But yeah, he's he's a miserable fucking person, and I, I. If it makes any of those people, yeah. I don't really care about making those people feel better. But uh, I guess in the interest of fair and biased, unbiased reporting, I'm not a huge fan of Biden either. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I between the two, I I've got preferences. But, yeah. but that's like saying between getting shot in the face and getting shot in the you, foot. You can, like you, I can pick one. Like, you can tell it's an election year because I, I just, I really, I, I truly hate that motherfucker. And <laughs> like, and my drinking is picked I, up. Like, yeah, yeah. And like and I, like you said, I'm not a fan of the fucking other side either. But it's just like. It's the worst person being supported by the worst people, and it's half of us. It's fucking exhausting. So, sorry to, yeah, sorry to make this a fucking political ram fest. I, I don't like doing that on this show. It should be a form of escapism. But but there were some good jokes in there. It was, fuck, it was worth yeah. it. Yeah. And, and fuck him. Yeah, it, you, it's you not, do have to blow off It's scenes. not bullying. It's not bullying you know a good person and i could, so. i just couldn't help but bring up the like current trial stuff because it's so fucking funny <laughs> like, yeah. although it's funny in that like you still makes you hate everything depressed sort of way because yeah. like the way that the the media keeps like outing the jurors and like fucking that up because mm -hmm. it's just i mean everything with the trump trial stuff is like they've talked about it on like John Stewart's talked about it on the Daily Show and his old show on Apple. Um, but it's just this constant thing of like, the walls are finally closing in. Yeah, right. And it's like, we've been hearing that for five years. And it's like, they don't close in. Like, because, but guess what? It's, it's all corrupt. So, yeah, he turns out, even when you force a giant fucking bond bill on him he has enough money to buy his way out of shit so well and fucking the, and, on this show i'm gonna call him an asshole well, yeah <laughs> that's the only fucking reprieve i get because i have to watch that motherfucker on tv every day you don't the, my my secret is i just quit following any of it really. well obviously not because i, I mean I, I i i say tv the point is he's on everywhere he is everywhere yeah even like, on my like super carefully curated like i'm on blue sky now instead of twitter i only follow like a handful of people that i actually interact with you still get stuff and it's like a you can't the thing is like you can't care about like it, it, there's stuff i care about on a political level but you can't care about that shit and not get exposed to the stupid shit and radiation, like, also radiation, like, lots of that. It, fucking let it happen already. God damn, like just it, it, that's another thing. That's like every time, every time a fucking dictator farts, it's like World War Three, <laughs> and that's how the news reports it. It's like then just let World War Three happen. Yeah, I've been hearing it just, for thirty years. Yeah, yeah, let's just get it over. <laughs> it, God damn it. If you want, otherwise, everybody put your fucking bombs away. Yeah. Stop acting like you're going to use them or just use them because this is fucking, this is a torture. I was right this there. Mental torture. I was right there with you until I had kids. <laughs> and I was like, damn it. Why did I do that? Now I've got like something to like, he's like, yeah. You build a bomb shelter. It's like, you, you know, <laughs> do what you got to do. I'm not. I, I you, yeah you gotta you gotta fight for the future well, uh, i still have the luxury of not believing in well, one yeah, yeah i guess that's the other yeah. side of the coin though is i can feel like 
our current people can all get burned up as long as they survive i trust in the future that they would build so like i guess still bring it on i just i just need that yeah. bomb shelter so if anybody wants to donate a bomb shelter reach out <laughs> not even the funds were on just like just yeah <laughs> move a bomb shelter over to my house yeah pre-built please and like maybe every every now and then when they do that shit too it's like whoa world war three like somebody will post the map of like all the bomb targets in america and i'm always right on one. Oh, we are too because we, uh wright patterson air force base is a pretty big hub and that's really close to us um, but mm-hmm. it turns out there's like three other ones that it, like I didn't even know about, but they're like, oh yeah, Central Ohio's fucked. It's like, all right, well, we're already well, fucked kinda, though. Like, so. Well, I was kind of, I was kind of wondering, like, well, uh, well, there's like a massive missile launch, like, you know, where, where do, you, where would be safe? And it's like the Rockies. It's like I'm not gonna fucking go become a mountain man. No, I'd rather get it's melted. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? that's the, but that's it that's, that's the only spot it's like yeah there's like nothing here even the desert isn't safe like they put bombs in the desert so they're gonna attack those too yeah. i can't lake tahoe be a non-target or something like yeah. yeah can we just like like dedicate the fucking war shit to half the state and then like the other state so the state can be kind of neutral you get looking at it, and you're like, oh, the one state with nothing in North Dakota, fuck that. <laughs> like, yeah, just... yeah, I, even even that shit is like, yeah, it's like, fuck, Montana's one of the biggest targets of all. And it's like... And that's not because they have... Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. They don't have anything there. It's just everybody hates Montana. So you're going to take that <laughs> opportunity. You're like, ah, we're firing missiles anyway. Fuck Montana. Like... Yeah, they have, they have bombs. Yeah. That's that's they have bombs and then you pass the bombs and you realize god it's really flat here <laughs> um all right well i've just fucking given away state secrets we're gonna get a visit from the like hey nobody else knew montana was full of yeah, bombs I, I, I didn't I, yeah i didn't give away shit this was all online everything i learned was from online well the dark that's web, the yes. problem yeah. <laughs> yeah like everything i learned i learned from creepypastas I know, weren't the, like, early to mid-90s when nobody really had internet? Wasn't that great? We didn't know anything. It was fantastic. Yeah. That, that's also the problem, is, like, we still don't know anything, but we think we do. We know a lot of wrong stuff thanks to the internet, and nobody knows, So there's, right? like, a yeah. lot of fucking idiots out there who are way too confident. Like, not to go from one blowhard dipshit to another, but... Like the fucking cyber truck. You can't even like wash that in the daylight. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, like that came out. You'll you'll void your warranty <laughs> if you try to wash your car. <laughs> well, but it's And a- then like I saw another video of it, like a guy was driving it and it fucking like the gas pedal locked all the way down. So he's going full throttle and like the brake overrides it, so he was able to like pull off, but he couldn't figure out why the fucking car was going full throttle, and why I the s- I saw one where the, the like brake fell off, or the yeah brake or the, the gas, one of them like the pedal just so the like, gas pedal yeah it has a plate on top of it and it slid up and jammed on the under the floorboard yeah so it wasn't even like a fucking mechanical error that. You know, you couldn't do it. This it's just dumbass aesthetic. Poor design, yeah, yeah. And the, but somehow the like dumbest fucking car people on earth were like, we can make the best truck. Well, in fairness, yeah. I you can basically just take it to the bank that every one of those poor design decisions were ones where the engineers had it right, and then Elon came in and was like, no, it's got to do this, and they're like, but that one, he's like, do this. And yeah. the only people left are the ones that will just do it because if you question them, you get fired. Like, that's a fucking, like, known, you know, that's not a secret. No, yeah, I mean, you, you're either on board with creative or you're not. <laughs> um, Stainless steel. But, sir, that'll run out of here. Stainless steel. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's not a future truck if it doesn't look like shit that's the other thing it's ugly as sin i know that's the like, i don't I, I just thought of it the other because there's somebody that i think lives near me because i see them all the time um where they work near me it's like on my way home from work they've got one of those rivians i don't know if you've seen those mm-hmm. 
they're pretty fucking yeah. ugly. The first time I saw one, I was like, what uh-huh. the fuck is that? Although I got looking into them, apparently they're pretty solid for an electric like work truck. Like they're not terrible trucks, but they look stupid. And then yeah. Elon's like, hold my beer. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll make yeah, that look like the best design thing you've ever seen compared to my stupid ass you know, truck. You know what? I love sharp angles. <laughs> like his fucking truck looks like a goddamn like 1950s mousetrap yeah. or some shit. Like one of those metal ones where like it's just a metal box. Yeah. Well, it reminds me because I grew up in this time. You're the rat if you're driving it. So when, when computer games first went to 3D, but they weren't really 3D, you know, like doom and stuff <laughs> that's what cars looked like because they're like we can represent them with six triangles total that's all you get and he's like yes yeah. that was so fucking sweet <laughs> oh man it's... and again you know that they had a truck design that looked really cool and he came in and was like no 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 it's gotta look like this it's like it, sir it's just so weird it's just so weird because it's like it's the cyber truck is like so you're telling me you you played Cyberpunk. <laughs> there are cooler fucking cars in that. Game. Yeah. <laughs> like, just make something like that. What, another, um, and of course, it's the internet too. So I, I don't, I, I I fall into that where if I read a story that like confirms what I already want to know, I don't necessarily. What I believe, yeah. yeah. But I I had heard where he the part of the design was supposed to be, well, they're so big and heavy and angular that when they get in a wreck, they don't need airbags and the NTSB or whatever, or NH national highway and safety, whatever they came out. They're like, um, by federal oh, it law, it has to have airbags. He's like, but it doesn't need them. It's like, if you want it on the fucking road, it does like, so that yeah, tells yeah. me he doesn't even look into like, yeah. I would also feel better if this had airbags yeah. law or not. Like, yeah, I don't I don't give a fuck like what geometry you think. You didn't understand the geometry of a gas pedal. <laughs> right. So And again, no that that, that could be a completely this. fabricated story, but it fits everything I've ever heard about the guy and his design process. Yeah. Um I don't know. I don't know. It's it's kind of funny though like how much goddamn trouble we have like manufacturing car alternatives. You know what though? I will say I don't remember growing up, and maybe it's just because I didn't do it, and there's more like, it's not them taking responsibility, force responsibility now. There's an awful, like a shit ton of like major car recalls across like all types of cars, across all manufacturers. Yeah. So I don't know what that's all about either, but. Uh, we're just, we're just learning that a lot of corners have been cut. Yeah. Uh, from cars to Boeing. <laughs> to food, I just read a thing where uh, three brands of kids' applesauce that have cinnamon in it have been linked to lead poisoning. And they think the yeah they uh, lunchables too. Did they? Yeah, yeah. They found lead in lunchables. Cool. My daughter loves How them. The fuck do you Actually, do? she quit How eating them. Maybe she quit eating just... them because she's like, "This tastes like lead." But yeah, it's just like it's just cracker stackers. The... How the fuck did you fuck that up? The cinnamon thing turned out, they think they're still investigating it, is that the uh, supplier of the cinnamon was putting lead powder in it to make it way more so that they could, you know, basically that like <laughs> thousands of year old like gimmick of, you know, fucking with the scales to when you champion uh, profit at all costs, there's people that really take all costs seriously. They just. Oh, any cost. Yeah. Lead cost. The cost of lead. All right. Well, this has been the, no, uh, the non-essential uplifting power hour. The yeah. Affirmation going out into the world. Yeah, we turned uh, a... I, I almost said, hey, we got an episode that was 30 minutes, and then we added 30 minutes of non-sequitur. And that was after 20 minutes of intro, but... That was a little more intentional. Yeah. Pulling back the curtain here a little bit, but, like, I feel like when we're doing these shows every other week, we got to give them, got to give them bang for the buck. Yeah. And if there's, if we're done, at, if, like if we're just flat out fucking done at 30 minutes then the show is over, but you know, I, we had, we had, we had some, shit to we say. Had, we had gas in the tank Yeah, and, and gas tank gas. Places. Well, yeah, I always yeah. got that. That's yeah that's what doctors say it's a huge problem that's really my one asset that i bring to this show is this urgency that only can come from a guy that's got gas and needs to a horrible dietary approach 
<laughs> the ramifications it has on the human body. Yeah. So that's the show this week. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Whatever. When do we do this? <laughs> I don't know. See. Yeah, ya. not next week. The week after, I think. Which I think is two weeks, but I can't count. Nope. A fortnight. Not in this, eh. not in this economy. <laughs>